Good afternoon, students. I'm Mrs. Lynette Pinto. Today, I'm going to take the subject accountancy. The topic chosen for today is reconstitution of partnership firm under that admission of a new partner. Now, before moving on to the admission of a partner, I would like to tell you about what is reconstitution of the partnership firm. Now, what is partnership? Partnership is an agreement between two or more persons named as the partners, carrying on the business for making profit and sharing them. So here, they will have an agreement. If there is any change in the existing agreement, is known as reconstitution of the firm. Now, when there is a reconstitution of the partnership firm, when there is an admission of a new partner, change in profit sharing ratio, when there is a retirement or there is a death of a partner. In all this situation, it is said to be reconstitution of the partnership firm. Example, when there is an admission of a partnership firm, say for example, A and B are partners and existing firm and C comes into the business. When C comes, he will be given his share of profit. And the partnership deed will be changed here. A few terms will be changed. When the new partner comes, he will be given his share of profits. So there is a change in the profit sharing ratio. So it's said here, there is a reconstitution, change in the partnership deed. Similarly, when there is a retirement of a partner or there is a death of a partner, one partner retires. So the remaining partners will take up the retiring partners or deceased partner's share. So there is a change in the agreement, change in the profit sharing ratio. So this concept is called reconstitution of partnership firm. Now we'll move on to admission of a partner. A new partner can be admitted with the consent of all the other existing partners. Otherwise, it is provided in the agreement. When a new partner comes, he will be bringing his share of capital over and above. He might be bringing the premium or goodwill if an existing firm he is entering into and their profit is more than the normal profits. Then he has to get, other than the capital, he is also getting premium or that is known as goodwill. Uh, why the new partner has been admitted into the existing firm? To have more capital or additional capital or to have managerial skill or both so that the existing firm will grow or for expansion purpose. Now, when a new partner comes into the business, there will be certain accounting changes, treatment of accounts when a new partner has been admitted. First of all, there will be a change in the profit sharing ratio. The old partners have to sacrifice a part of their share in favor of the new partner. And a new account to be maintained or to be opened, that is known as revaluation re account. So today, I'll discuss about the revaluation re account, how to prepare it, and how to close the revaluation re account. Now, what is revaluation re account? Revaluation re account is a nominal account. It is a nominal account prepared at the time of admission of a partner, retirement of a partner, or a death of the partner. We are here, we are talking about the admission of a partner, so we have to prepare the revaluation re account. Now, why do you prepare the revaluation re account? Sometimes, some of the asset will be overstated or it is understated. To set right, at the time of admission of a partner, revaluation re account is opened to bring all the assets at their proper price and reassess all the liabilities. 
If there is any increase or decrease in the value of asset or decrease or increase in the value of liabilities or there are certain assets which are unrecorded or there are certain liabilities which are unrecorded to be brought into account in the revaluation account. Now revaluation account, I said it's a nominal account. So if there is a gain, example, there is an increase in the value of assets. Increase in the value of asset, it's a gain. So the entry will be concern asset account is debited to revaluation account. So the concern asset will be credited in the revaluation account. Similarly, if there is a decrease in the value of any assets, it will be debited. The concerned asset is debited to revaluation account because it's a loss. Now coming to the liabilities. If the liabilities have increased, it's a loss to the firm, they have to pay more amount. So the liabilities which is increased will be recorded on the debit side of the revaluation account. And in case the liability is reduced, it is decreased, then it will be credited to revaluation account. So I told you about increase or decrease in the value of assets, increase or decrease in the value of liabilities. I repeat it, increase in the value of asset is credited to revaluation account and decrease in the value of asset will be debited to revaluation account. Revaluation re is a nominal account, so expenses or losses, incomes and gains, you take that concept into account. So if the liabilities increase, liabilities will be debited to revaluation account and decrease means right on the credits. Now, now coming to the unrecorded assets and liabilities. The unrecorded assets, it's a gain, so it will be credited to revaluation account. And the liabilities, unrecorded liabilities, which is brought into account at the time of admission, will be debited to revaluation account. And the result, net result, will be the profit or loss that will be distributed to the old partners in the old profit sharing ratio. So the profit or loss on revaluation will be distributed to the old partners in the old ratio. Now coming to a certain tips when you prepare the revaluation account. First of all, compare the assets. Compare the asset given in the existing balance sheet and in the adjustment. If the assets are increased, how much it is increased? Example, in the balance sheet, the building valued at 5 lakhs and in the adjustment which is given, building are increased by 10%, increased by 10%. So 5 lakh into 10% is 50,000. So that 50,000 amount will be recorded on the credit side of the revaluation account. So compare. What is the value in the balance sheet and what percentage is increased? Or if they say building is now revalued at 6 lakhs, what is the old value? 5 lakhs, I said. Now the adjustment, the new value is 6 lakhs. Compare from 5 lakh, it is increased to 6 lakhs. So in turn, 1 lakh of buildings is gone up. The worth is gone up, increase. So in the revaluation account, building should be credited. How much amount? 1 lakh. So compare and read whether it is gone up or decreased. And accordingly, decrease in the value of asset, debited, increase in the value of asset, it is credited. The second tip about the provision for doubtful debts related to debtors, provision created against doubtful debts. If the provision created is increased, then you write on the debit side of the revaluation re account. If the provision is decreased, then you write on the credit side of the revaluation re account. In case there are certain assets, but no adjustment is given, there is no increase or decrease in the value of asset, do not write these assets in the revaluation re account. 
Lastly, close the account, add up the credit side, add up the debit side. The balancing figure is the profit or loss. If the credit side of the revaluation is greater, you get the profit which should be divided to all partners in the old ratio. If in case the debit side is greater than the credit side, there will be loss and the loss also will be distributed to the old partners in the old profit sharing ratio. That is the first step, preparation of revaluation account 